Well, the NHTSA data is finally out today, and even though they say, quote, they want to be transparent about things, it's not very transparent information, but we can ferret some things out with the help of people like Ava Fox and also just using our brains. Also, guess who got a response from Elon Musk and a useful one to boot? Let's take a look. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So if you don't follow me on Twitter, well, you should for sure. It's just Dr. Know-It-All 16 on Twitter. I have no idea why there are 15 ahead of me, but <laughs> that's who I am. Anyway, after many, many times responding to Elon Musk and never expecting anything, I was caught up in this thread here. And amazingly enough, my tweet is already at something like 300,000 views. I mean, boy, I wish some of my YouTube videos could do that well, right? Anyway, so it started off with Jimma or James Dalma, who I've had on my show before, amazing person, very, very knowledgeable about AI and Tesla and all of that kind of stuff. Anyway, he said, I just had a two hour full self-driving drive on winding mountain roads that was transcendent. It was perfect, not good, perfect. Smooth, controlled, assertive, comfortable, better than human. Oh man, this is really happening. Bunch of smiles. Bravo autopilot team. Bravo Elon Musk. And by the way, not that I had anything like this kind of a long drive today, but I went from my house to the chiropractor and back with no interventions besides reversing out of the parking lot and reversing out of my own driveway. So that's pretty transcendent in its own right. I don't know if it was quite as perfect because there was a couple times I was a little bit nervous, but it was pretty amazing to drive a total of about a half an hour with no intervention across city traffic, uh, back roads, a bunch of crazy lane changes and heavy traffic, unprotected left turns on the highway, off the highway. I mean, it's, it is pretty remarkable to see this stuff happening. And this actually does tie into exactly what we're going to talk about in just a little bit too. But of course, to Elon first, he responded to James by saying, in that case, you'll really love 10.13, which is the next software release that's coming out. So I responded to that and said, 10.12 is so good already. I can't wait. And by the way, it's 10.12 by two, but you know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, I said, any idea when 11 is coming out, which is the single stack to rule them all. The old highway stack is so good you have a high bar to hurdle, but I bet it's even more human-like to drive with full neural networks on the highway. To which Elon responded, I'm driving an alpha version of full self-driving on the highway and it's not quite ready. Probably ready for wide release this summer. So first of all, that last sentence, several people said, but it's already summer. Actually, technically it's not. It's not till, I don't know if it's the 21st or 22nd this year, but anyway, it's a couple of days from now. So no, we're not technically in summer. Summer goes from around the 21st of June to around the 21st of September. So we've got approximately a three month window assuming, of course, that Elon's right in his timing. But anyway, so that's, you know, we're looking at like 90 days or so. Full self-driving 10.13 supposedly will be coming out in about two weeks or so around the end of June. And again, the plan I heard from Elon Musk is that it's going to go to around a million drivers by the end of the year. So if that's the case, that'll be an impressively large beta testing group. So anyway, that's the timing. What about the rest of this? Well, full self-driving on the highway is not the same as current highway stacks. So even if you've got full self-driving beta, you'll notice that the visualization and everything changes as you enter the highway, usually somewhere around the merge lane. It like alters from the red lines and the really pretty visualizations back to kind of a more old school visualization. That happens because they're using something with a whole bunch more heuristic code. It's a bunch of C++ and C, not nearly as many or potentially not any neural networks at all involved in all of this. So it's a much more old and refined and in general, relatively elegant stack on the highway, although there are a bunch of things that it's not perfect at. Number one, it's really annoying about lane changes. It's very slow about that, which means a lot of times you turn the turn signal on and it just sits there for a while. And of course, traffic being what it is, people will drive up behind you and try to pass you as the car is trying to pull out. That's very annoying. It's also annoying that it doesn't get out of the way when it sees a merge lane coming up. So right, people are trying to get on the highway. You as a good citizen should move into the other lane so that they can merge in easily. The car doesn't do that at this point. And it's a little funky about merging too, as it gets into the merge 
storage lane, it kind of last minute moves into the main highway lane instead of merging much more slowly. So there's several things that the new neural network stack will be able to do, I hope, that will be better than the old stack, but the old stack is really, really good. I mean, it's very consistent, very confidence inspiring. I drive a lot of miles doing road trips and never really worry about it. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see how that stacks up. And of course, what Elon's saying, an alpha version, of course, is before a beta version. So it's the early, early stuff that's used for internal testing. Usually beta is when it starts going out to a select group in the public. So he's driving a really, really early version of this. I've heard they've been testing this since like August of last year. So early is still relatively old in terms of testing, but I'm sure there's been a ton of work done on it to like upgrade it and everything. So it's probably still pretty fresh. But anyway, if they're to the point where they're at an alpha and he's driving it and he's saying it's not quite ready, of course, that means there's still some bugs and issues with it, but it must be getting relatively close if he thinks that within the next 90 days or so, it'll be ready for public release. So we can all keep our fingers crossed. That is really, really exciting news. All right. And then by way of getting to the NHTSA data release, I want to actually briefly mention an article by Eva Fox, which is really, really good. It's titled Tesla Driver Assist Systems Are Much Less Likely to Crash Than Waymo, Transdev, or GM's Crews Per NHTSA Data. This is not what the NHTSA or NHTSA says, but you can dig around and you can figure out that it's actually the truth. I'll put a link to the whole article in the description so you can check it out. But the really big takeaway here is the first paragraph. Tesla cars using driver assist systems are significantly less likely to crash than Waymo, Transdev, and GM's crews, according to NHTSA's data. Although the regulator's data only show the number of accidents without taking into account the size of the fleet and the miles that are driven, such a conclusion is obvious with a little digging into the details, which it is. And again, I did a video about this yesterday. Definitely check that out if you're interested. I'll put a card in the corner and link it at the end. In that video, I go into some of the reasons why NHTSA's data is really, really lacking in transparency and makes things look a lot worse for Tesla than they actually are. Speaking of lack of transparency and everything, I found it rather ironic that the press release that NHTSA has has a quote by Stephen Cliff, NHTSA's administrator, saying, the data released today are part of our commitment to transparency, accountability, and public safety. Because while the data is really, really cool, it really doesn't paint the complete picture and you really have to use your brain to figure out what's going on. So <laughs> transparency is not what I would call this data, although it's very, very cool and interesting stuff to look at. All right, and on to the data, we've got two different categories of data. One of them is level two ADAS. Level two is just automated driver assistance features. So it's basically things like lane keeping and traffic assist cruise control, stuff like that. Whereas ADS, which is automated driving systems, as it says here, encompasses SAEs level three through five. If you haven't seen my video on that, you should definitely check that out. I did a whole thing on level zero through level five, so you can check it out if you're interested. So anyway, it's important they've broken this up into two segments, but what I'm gonna do, they actually talk about ADS first, but I'm gonna move down to level two ADAS first instead, because I think it's important to talk about the less capable vehicles first, and then look at the more capable vehicles. So jumping down here to the level two ADAS, and remember, we're gonna be looking at level three-ish when we look at the ADS equipped vehicles, but you can see there are quite a few vehicle crashes, you know, in the 40s, 20s to 40s, depending on what month. And by the way, in the video that I did yesterday, I questioned whether NHTSA's data was going to record Teslas from 2016 to 2022, because it looked like it might be doing that, but it appears that they're only looking at July 2021 through May 2022, so 11 months. And interestingly, you can see a chart here of the United States by state. You can see Texas has quite a few. Weirdly enough, like Oregon has zero, but California, my goodness, 125 accidents in California. So not only is traffic really, really bad there, but also a lot of the most advanced systems and people driving more advanced cars and stuff like that are in California. But the other biggest states were Texas, Florida, and New York. Those are all very highly populated states. So, you know, it's, there's a tendency for you to have more accidents in states that have a higher population. And real quick, this is a really cool thing. It's the crash severity. The really interesting part here and the good, good part about all of this, remember, this is just the level two ADAS systems, but there were only six fatalities reported. So, you know, even one is way too many, but that's really, really good news to see how few fatalities were reported by this data. And then we get to the really interesting data points here. So you can see that Tesla really, really outperforms. <laughs> There's many, many more accidents by, by orders of magnitude than anybody else. I mean, the only other one that has a decent amount of these accidents is actually Honda of America. Now, again, we have to put this in perspective. There are, according to Ava Fox's article, 1.393 million Teslas on the roads in the United States. That's way more than the AP article that I saw yesterday that said about 
830,000. But I think this number seems much more reasonable. Over a million Teslas are on the road in the United States. Anyway, so it's a lot of vehicles driving a lot of miles. Again, Tesla says that the people average somewhere around 15,000 miles a year. So we're talking about multiple billions of miles, 12, 15, 16 billion miles being driven. So if we look at this, 273 accidents over that many miles of driving is very, 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 very small. So again, if you look at something like Lucid Motors with one accident, but they only have a couple of hundred cars on the road, their accident rate per million miles is way higher than Tesla's is by having one accident. So, you know, at that point, the statistics are completely skewed by a single accident when you've only got a few hundred cars and a few thousand miles being driven on the roads. The other question here that I'm really confused about is why they're calling this level two ADAS equipped vehicles. I don't know if what they're doing is they're making a distinction between full self-driving beta and traditional autopilot, or if people have full self-driving, like if you purchase the extra package for 10 or $12,000 or whatever it costs, or subscribe to it at $200 a month, if that automatically bumps you to level three and these other vehicles are considered to be level two, I'm a little confused how this data is being segmented out for Tesla in particular. But anyway, they definitely overrepresent. but when you take account of how many Teslas there are on the roads, compared to these other manufacturing companies that may only have a few models and only a few, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of miles driven. So anyway, this looks really bad, but it's so decontextualized, it's really difficult to know. I looked at this page yesterday, but I wanna turn back to this again because I think this may actually have something to do with the ADAS level two versus level three thing. So Tesla vehicles with no active safety involved had you know, somewhere around 0.75 accidents per million miles. Again, looking at the total US fleet, it's much, much higher than this. But notice that with autopilot engaged, it was down to like somewhere around 0.2 accidents per million miles. So this could explain like maybe Tesla is saying that no active safety features means that the car is driving at level two effectively. I, I don't know. And then autopilot engaged means it's level three. So I, I'm a little confused again about how they're segmenting this out, but this may give us some sort of insight. I really wish that NHTSA had been a little more transparent about all this, but of course, transparency is not the greatest thing in the world with all the data that they're sharing. So anyway, again, just to remember here, we've got 273 accidents with Tesla incorporated using level two. So something that is not full self-driving beta, that for sure is level three. So speaking of level three, let's take a look at the statistics. Number one, remember that the by month was somewhere between 20 and 40 accidents per month, whereas with ADS, level three to level four autonomy, we're down to like, you know, the teens and actually only one in May, which is really amazing. Now, again, a lot of these companies that report these accidents, it takes them a really long time to find out about them. So I expect this May number will probably come up, you know, by some extent, because there will be entities that report this much after the fact. And so maybe by July, we'd have like 10 accidents in May or something like that. But anyway, you can see it's much, much smaller than it was with ADAS level two, which is a really good statistic overall. It means that these things are safer than the more basic vehicles. So that's a hugely important important statistic. Turning to by state, wow, a lot of states don't have any accidents. Oh, Georgia has one. <laughs> but again, you can see Texas and Florida and actually New York had zero also. So they have a few and you can see there's a crap ton in California and a whole bunch in Arizona as well. And we will see why in just a second. Before we look at who's responsible for the accidents, let's actually look at the highest injury severity. So this is the accidents that were actually reported with level three to level four autonomy. So 108 of the accidents had no injuries reported, which means fender bender, very small accident, you know, minor, moderate, serious is very, very, you know, only one person had a serious injury and no fatalities. So again, statistically, we're looking at not just fewer accidents, but fewer serious accidents and no fatalities. Wow, this is really, really important data. This means that everybody, not just for Tesla, but for everybody should be pushing this more advanced ADS type system. And now finally, let's look at the reporting entities. So remember, Tesla had 273 when they were counting it with ADAS level two, they have one with ADAS level three. So Elon for a long time said that Tesla had had no accidents with full self-driving beta. I guess they had one. But when you consider that there is around 100,000 beta testers, many of whom have been beta testing for over a year now, to have only one accident with full self-driving beta in the past year is incredibly remarkable. So this is hugely, hugely good news for Tesla. The problem is that I'm sure in the mainstream press, what they're gonna do is say 274 accidents altogether for Tesla, which is a bigger number than anybody else. But this specific one, this is full self-driving beta right here. One accident with full self-driving beta. 
We don't know the severity, but holy mackerel, that is a really, really good statistic given the amount of people that are driving and the amount of miles that they must be driving. So who happens to have the most accident? Well, Cruise LLC has a bunch and Transdev Alternative Services, which I think does autonomous buses and stuff. And then Waymo is way, way out there in the lead. So that was Google's, well, it was their own company, then they were Google's, and now they've been spun off again. But Waymo, if you don't know, is driving self-driving taxis around in Phoenix and some other areas as well. And Cruise, of course, is driving around San Francisco. So these two companies that very famously say that they're automated, fully automated taxi, you know, driverless taxis, have contributed the lion's share of all of the accidents with ADS level three and level four autonomous vehicles from the past year. So that's pretty, you know, damning, I guess. Again, a lot of these are probably, if you look at the collision severity and everything, a lot of these are really, really minor. They're probably just fender benders and things like that. But still, it's not a good sign that Cruise and Waymo have been involved in so many crashes. But it's fantastic news to see that Tesla's full self-driving beta has been involved in a whopping one crash. That's pretty amazing, guys. To the Tesla autopilot and full self-driving beta team, congratulations. That is an amazing statistic. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like the video so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content and consider following me on Twitter as well. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. I very much enjoy the conversations that we have on Discord and other places. And the support, the emotional and financial support is huge. So thank you all so much. And of course, if you want to join, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.